Hi, this is Rachel from the Dotting Center. A couple of weeks ago, I shared with you all my top secret resin PBO button stash. That's a, that's a mouthful, and I don't share it with everybody. It's top secret, but a couple of you were interested. How do you make those cute little PBO buttons? Well, I am gonna share that with you today. They're just fun to make. They're really, they add interest to your paintings and you get to play with some magical paint. This PBO paint is fantastic. Now there's a reason why I called my shop the Dotting Center. Not only is it because the center is where mandalas start, but they also, that's where your eye kind of gets drawn to at the end of a piece. All the lines and dots point right to that center space. And also, as an artist, the parallel is when you dot paint a mandala, it brings you to your center. It's a very centering activity. So I think we all agree this center space is very important. So as such, let's dress it up a bit. Let's use some fancy paints and make our own PBO resin center dots. Today we'll be making several center dots for this painting and in the end, you'll get to vote on your favorite. So this is a 16 inch round canvas and the way that I paint big work is I leave this center space empty because you, sometimes you just don't know what paints you're gonna be using throughout the course of the project. And also, I like to leave the center dot open for when I need to use a compass, just in case I need a concentric circle to throw in there. So um, the way that you wanna measure the center dot is just open your compass, draw a circle, and then you have it measured. And then you keep that measurement on your compass and go over to a piece of paper and then draw that circle out on the paper. Now what this is gonna do is give you a pattern so that you can create a center dot using fancy paints. And um, then you can place that dot onto your canvas at the end. And I'm gonna make a bunch, all different colors, and then pick it out at the end. You guys can vote, see which one you like best. The surface that I use is a Silpat baking sheet, not this silicone craft sheet. This will warp with the paint. So you wanna use the Silpat heavy duty baking sheet. That will work for everything. Now the first thing we have to do is make a thick outline that will basically corral the paint. Keep it all in this circle shape. So you need a thick gold outline and you can use this PBO relief outliner. They have these at Dick Blick. And I have two different options for you. You can use this one, and this is actually, this is the most difficult part of the whole process, is trying to get a circular line. It's very, it's, it takes practice, but it's doable. And you just want to take the pattern that you drew out, put it underneath your mat, and then draw your paint outline directly over the top. So what we're going for here is a thick outline, and that was done with the PBO relief outliner, and then this is done with Arteza heavy body gold paint. You can use any heavy body paint. It doesn't have to be gold, it can be black, it can be whatever color you want, but as long as it's thick, and it's going to dry raised, then that's what you're going for. And basically what I do is I clean up the edges using a silicone tool. I use that, I use those for everything really, but for nudging paint in the right direction, those are perfect. So here's another shot. Now if you get your circle kind of wonky like this, it's not a big deal because you can just come in. I'm taking my flat chisel silicone tool and just kind of nudging the paint. As long as it's wet, you can move it in any direction you'd like. Now this prism paint comes in all different colors and I grab the colors that I'm using in my painting 
and I'm just going to pick ones that I think will mix well and put them in these little gold outlines. Now the first step, you really have to mix it up really well. All of the pigments settle to the bottom, so you want to get a really nice mix with this paint. Also, crack a window or do this outside because this paint is super chemical smelling. It's not something that you want to do in a closed room inside your house. Now, I use these reusable pipettes for kind of detail-y work with this stuff. And you can reuse these over and over again. Uh, this is just to give me a little bit more control with the color if I want to do something where it's even, um, the even paint application is required, I'll use these. But you can use a dotting tool, you can use a coffee stir, um, really anything to get that paint inside the circle. And you can see it just kind of magically starts to do its thing. Um, it mixes with the other paint. Also, if you find that you put too much in, these pipettes kind of suck the excess out, and that can help you out too. But you can see that it just, the paint starts to react with the other colors. It moves and shifts, and all the magic happens on the top surface. It doesn't happen underneath. It happen, it kind of bubbles up and the cell effects happen at the top of these little coins that we're making. You can use your silicone tools to move the paint in different directions, make dots, make swirls. It's just kind of fun. And you can try and control this as much as you'd like. And really the paint is going to do what the paint wants to do in the end. And that's kind of the fun of it. It just, it moves and shapes, and as it dries, it creates different kind of design, uh, designs in the paint, marbleized little designs. It's really fun to watch. Now you probably have about oh, 10 minutes of working time, I'm just guessing, but it also depends on the colors. I've noticed that my white paint is a little thicker. So any kind of swirl effects you want to do in the beginning, but you can see the magic happens on the top. So you can't really use a mold or anything and expect the bottoms to look as cool as the top. Now to add resin. I'm going to add another level of gold paint just to thicken up the sides again. So we'll do the same thing and I got a little carried away with the side there. So look at this. These silicone tools just clean up the edge really beautifully. Now this step is optional, but if you decide you want to have a really thick coin and you want to extend that, uh, that outer edge up a little bit, go ahead and apply a second coat of paint and I'll show you how to smooth that out. This is actually a different paint than I used previously. This is a medium body paint. It's going to dry a little bit. Um, less raised than the heavy body paint, but you can see you can just kind of move it around and shape it. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then using my large flat silicone tool, this just kind of cleans up the edge, gets the excess off and makes it nice and smooth. Now I'm using this silicone mold to mix my resin in. This is a two part resin. So you do exactly the same amount of resin and hardener, and then you mix it up. If you 
are doing small things like this, it's probably best to invest in some UV resin, which doesn't require mixing. It's just, you just pour it on and then cure it using a UV lamp, but I don't have that. And uh, so I'm just using what I've got. Now you just carefully pour your resin into your coin shape making sure that you don't overfill. That's what you're trying to avoid. You don't want it to spill out over the top. And you just want to put enough in to make it look the way you want it. And then we'll move on to the other one and we'll pour that in. I will, I, in every video that I use resin, I have to come in and tell you that if you are new to resin, I would recommend reading up on it first. It's, it's really kind of a, a tricky thing to work with, but Art Resin has a perfect FAQ page. There's every kind of question you could possibly have about resin and they answer it beautifully. Now here comes the world's largest shot of a kitchen torch, in case you need the serial number. Uh, but basically what a torch does is it just pops all the bubbles. See those bubbles on the top? You just hit it real quick with a torch and you're good to go. Okay, so now everything has cured overnight and we're gonna peel off the excess from our resin mold, throw that away. And now here is what the coins look like. Everything is dry and smooth. And you can actually take some of the excess, if there's you know, rough edges, you can cut those off with an X-Acto blade, but you can see all that metallic shine. It's just really interesting, these little buttons, and you never can, you can't control what it's gonna do. Uh, so that's why I do this separate, I don't do this on the canvas anymore. Because if it doesn't turn out, then you're kind of, you get it. That's a problem. So now we can actually play with these and see which one works the best. Because it's such a central part of the picture, we want to make sure that it pulls everything together. So it's just like a rug. Just like, you know, in the words of the Big Lebowski, a rug just ties the whole room together, man. You know what I mean? So this is what these center dots do. They just tie your whole painting together right at the end. So I don't know, what do you think? Do we like the gold? Do we like the swirly one? It's kind of interesting. Or do we go with this bluish one? I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and uh, I'm gonna wait and see what you guys say and then I'm gonna glue that thing down. So what do we think about PBO resin buttons? Are you gonna work on your own little secret stash? So much fun. Anyway, this was a great project and I'm so glad that we spent some time together and I hope you all have a wonderful week and uh, as always, you can visit me over at the dottingcenter.com for any dot art supply needs that you might have. It helps to support the channel and bring you valuable content like this. So, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Until next time, bye.